Hello and welcome to PK Glitz. I'm Janelle Marshall. Today we're going to be doing a class on enameling with powder keg embossing powders. The items we'll need for today's class are powder keg embossing powder. Very important because it can withstand the heat of multiple heatings. Also a good embossing pad, not a watermark pad, but embossing pad. And you might even want to have a re-inker because it needs to be very wet as we're using it. A good quality heavyweight card stock. An alligator clip for holding your heated image. Antistatic powder and an antistatic brush. Obviously our stamp that we're going to stamp our image with and a sea wool sponge. It has a lot of character to it. There are a lot of dimples and dapples in it that in a moment you'll see how we use that. If you're going to of course put this into a card you'll also need your bone folder, scissors, tape, and card stock. And don't forget those coffee filters will really help us in dealing with our excess product. Okay, let's begin our class on powder keg enameling. Several years ago when I first started working with powder keg embossing powders I realized their quality and the difference between the powder keg powders and others on the market. Because they have such high color they can be heated repeated times and not get that milky or hazy look that you get occasionally. Well with that in mind I created a technique we call enameling and in that technique we actually overlay five different colors and gives us a marbled effect. I came up with nine different palettes and today I'm going to show you the purple palette. The colors that I'm going to use in the purple palette are Merlot, Copper Kettle, Eggplant, Amethyst, Silver, and then we reserve the black to do our stamped image. We're going to take our embossing ink pad and you want to be sure that it has a lot of ink on it, either a new pad or one that's been recently re-inked. Don't let your pad get too dry. And the first application we're going to make is what is known as direct to paper. That's exactly what we're doing. We're just taking our ink and we're putting it directly onto our cardstock. I want to be sure that every little bit of that is covered. Now, once we feel that we've done that, I'm going to actually turn this over because at this point now, I'm going to add my first color. The first color is added to the entire cardstock piece, all over the whole thing. Okay, let it just sort of wash around there, but we want the whole piece covered with the powder. Now we're going to take that, I'm going to get myself a fresh piece of paper here, and we're going to heat it. When you're heating with your heat tool, you want to be sure, and a little thing's on the end, don't worry about that. I'll just get a little bit of more powder there where I did that. When you're working with your heat tool, it's best to use the type that have the pointed nose instead of the ones that look like little hair dryers. You'll get a more focused heat and I think you'll be more happy with the end results. When you're first using your tool, be sure to turn it on for just a little bit and let it warm up before you actually start heating your piece. I'm going to turn mine on, let it warm up just a little and then start heating on the surface. Now we'll use the same technique we use always in our embossing and that's M&M. When it melts, move. But until it melts you don't really need to. You can just stay in that same area and just let it melt along. Now if you'll actually sort of blow the air ahead of you, you'll find that it heats very quickly. You can see how fast this is changing, how quickly I'm getting a heated surface. Now I have a protective piece underneath my paper here so I can actually heat this right on my table, 
but you do want to be careful. You are going to have quite a bit of heat going here, and you want to put something underneath before you actually just blow the heat right straight down onto your table. Now, we have our first and basic color. My second color is going to be Copper Kettle. Using my sea sponge, and you can see what I talked about character, it's got a lot of little places in it. I'm going to take that sponge, go over to my embossing pad, and another little tip, if you do this particular technique frequently, you might want to relegate a pad that's just for embossing. You can see it's going to get a little dirty, and that's okay. But just go ahead and leave that. That pad is going to be my embossing pad. Get all over your sponge. Then we're going to come over to the piece we've done and lightly tap various ways all the way around, just like that. Now notice, I didn't do little donuts like this, okay? I didn't press really hard each time. I gave a very light tap as I was applying that ink. It will make a big difference and you'll see it when we apply our next color of powder. Just that little bit that I actually put on there, and I'm just going to take my powder now and just drizzle it on there. Just that little bit that I did can you see? I'm going to just tilt it a little bit so that you can see how it's on there. Okay? See how much is there? We don't want to cover the whole piece. Now we're just adding little bits and pieces of color. So once again, I'm going to get rid of that excess, warm up the heat tool, and let's start to heat. This happens to be copper kettle. Copper kettle is a metallic based color and you'll find that all of your metallic colors and that's gold, silver, copper, bronze, patina, all of the colors in that range because they are shiny, metallic in nature, they really want to hog the show. So you want to be careful when you apply those that you apply them lightly. A little bit of a metallic goes a long way. Now, see how we've changed our color look here? I'm going to try and get that where it doesn't flash for you, but I do want you to see that difference in color. Now, color number three. Same effect. Take our sponge, ink it up lightly, very lightly, and in different ways, touch our paper, just like so. Come back in to color number three, and this time it's going to be eggplant, and just drizzle that on. Okay? Let the excess fall away. Can okay, you see how that's applied? Again, I'm just going to give you a, a little look here so that you can see the difference in where it goes. Now, once again, we're going to heat that amount. I'm just going to pour this little bit of excess right back in here. Take your heat tool, warm, and then apply it to your piece. And again, M&M, melt and move. Don't move till it melts, but when it does, move. We're starting to get a really interesting look now. It's almost a marbled effect on our piece. Almost done. There we go. Okay. And you can see the difference now in our third color that we've added. Now we've got one more before we do our focus color. I'm going to let that cool just a tiny little bit. If you get too anxious in your work, sometimes you'll take that sponge and you'll go on it and it's so hot, it's a little molten, that it will actually stick to your sponge. So give it just a second to cool before you go on to your next color. Now that we feel like it has, same idea. Very lightly, very lightly make your application. Remember, no donuts no hard press. Come back to our fourth color, which is going to be amethyst. Drizzle it on. Once we've drizzled that on, shake away the excess, and here's our fourth color down. 
Now, I'm going to just put that little bit of extra right back in my jar. Of course, I'll use that again another time. Warm the heat tool, and here we go again. This really adds a lot of depth to the piece that we're doing. We've got four colors now, and notice once again, no milkiness. Every color is absolutely true. That's the difference in the quality of the powder keg embossing powders. There we have it. Beautiful, beautiful look we've got there now. Now we've got two colors left. We've got silver and black to do our image with. I called silver my focus color. And the reason that I did that, it's a color that we're going to put behind our image to give some brightness back behind the stamped image that we do. Many times because we're using black for our color for our image, it can kind of die away into your darker enameled color groups. So by using your focus color in the area where your stamped image is to be, it adds just a little pop and will really make it come around. Now I'm going to take my stamp, which I'm using the Dragonfly today, and I'm going to just sort of take a look at where I think that stamp is going to be on my piece. Obviously, right in here with just a little bit down the center. So with that in mind, I'm going to take my ink once again and just lightly in that area only, just kind of a little bit in here and maybe right down the center, a tiny little bit. Remember, we're working with silver and remember, metallics, little piggies, they're really going to hog the show if you're not careful. So I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of that silver now, put it in that area, dump away the excess, okay, and I'm going to try and fix that. There you go. You can see that, see where that silver is. It's better to go back and add more of that color than to get too much on the first time. It can be corrected if you overcolor. You can simply go back with one of your darker colors. But it's much easier to just be very light-handed with your application the first time, and then you won't have to go back. Now let's move that excess out of the way before we heat. There we go. And once again, and you're going to really see this silver come alive. There we go. See that start to change? And up into the area where I'm going to put my dragonfly wings. Okay. Now that's not too much, but I sure wouldn't want to have done any more than that. Okay. There we go. So that's my focus color now back behind my image. We're going to let that cool quite a little bit now before we take our next step. We're going to actually stamp our image onto our piece. But so that we get a real crisp image, we're going to use our antistatic powder and brush beforehand. Now I usually take my antistatic powder out of the little jar that it comes in. I put it in a little Ziploc box like this one and simply leave one of my small antistatic brushes in there as well. It's real easy then just to get and use and you will use and reuse it over and over and over again. It's a real great product. Now I feel like that's, that's cooled down. I think that's going to be okay. I'm going to take my antistatic powder and just gently go over the entire area that my stamped image is going to be. I don't want to over powder, but I do want to, to cover the whole area that may get some stamped image on it. Now you're going to think, oh goodness, now it's kind of, has kind of a, a powdery look on it. That's okay. When we heat this, after we've applied our stamped image, you'll see that that powder just dies down into the enameling. You won't notice it at all. And believe me, it's very important when we're going to be stamping our image. Now I'm just taking my piece and just trying to bend it back a little bit 
because it makes it a little bit easier for me to stamp. Now I have my piece, I have my antistatic powder on. If you watched one of our other classes, you saw that I like to ink my stamp rather than stamp my ink. And the reason I do that is because that way I can see what's going on. I don't have to worry about having a dry spot on that stamp. And I want to be sure it's got a good bit of ink all over. That looks good to me. Now I'm going to come in and it's important when you do this that you go straight down onto your paper. So just straight down let it set for just a moment. You don't need to jump up and down on it, just give it a chance to sit there and give it the ink a chance to transfer. Then we want to come right straight up. Put our stamp over here to the side. We're going to take our black powder, drizzle that gently over our piece, let the excess fall away, and there's our stamped image. Now if by some chance you mess that up, and believe me it can happen every, time, every now and again, you can at this point before it's heated simply take a tissue or a paper towel, wipe it off, right now it's just powder sitting on top of embossing ink, wipe it away, go back, re Use your antistatic powder, re-ink your stamp, and then make another stamped application. So it's not ruined. If you happen to, to move or, or smear your work, it's not ruined. Just clean it, re-antistatic, re-stamp. Okay? But we got a really nice crisp image here. I'm, I'm just real pleased with that. So now we're going to heat it. When you're heating your image on your enamel surface, you're heating the black, a couple of things. As soon as that starts to turn, as soon as it starts to melt, you want to get right off of it. If you heat it too long, it actually would just kind of flow right down into the colors. And remember that little piggy silver that we talked about that's underneath it? It will just gobble up that black and you'll lose your image entirely. So heat it just until it turns, just until it gets shiny, get off of it and go on to the next part. So here we go. I'm going to warm up a little bit and we're just going to start to heat. And just as soon as it starts to change, I'm getting right off of it and going on to the next part quick as I can, but still getting a good melt. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I'm taking a look at this from two or three angles. I want to be sure that there's no uh, powder left, that you're not seeing any powder that hasn't been melted. I don't see a bit. It just looks beautiful. And that's ready to apply to your card. Now, each one of these is really a work of art. You're never going to have two alike. They're always going to be gorgeous, beautiful backgrounds. If you feel that you don't want to use a stamped image on your piece, or maybe you don't have a lot of stamps, maybe card making is not your thing yet, you can also use our background acetates and our silhouettes for your image over the top of your enameled background. And I'll show you some of those in just a moment when we're looking through the gallery. But I believe that once you've tried this particular technique, you'll try it again and again and again, at least nine times until you can try each one of the palettes that we have in the powder keg group. Now here is one done in the rust palette, another in the green palette, the burgundy palette, one of my favorites the turquoise palette, the red palette, the cream palette, the purple palette, and to show you something a little different, 
the Harvest palette. One medium that the enameling is great on is chipboard. Any of your harder surfaces, chipboard or paper mache, readily accept the enameling process. Thank you for joining us today in our class on powder keg embossing powder enameling. Be sure to join our email family so that we can let you know about our next class and also about the kits available at the PK Glitz store. Until next time.